I tried to explore London on a hundred pound budget just so you can see what to expect in a day. This was a mix of some local things and some tourist things and I just love walking around London. So here's what happened in my day. I started my day by arriving in London Bridge and this is because I wanted to go to a borough market. It is a place loved by locals and tourists. It's been open for over a thousand years and now it's run by a charitable trust and it's all about sustainability and sourcing local food. So it's a great place to start your morning. There are also wonderful restaurants nearby the market and you can just like go and grab some bread and some cheese or whatever you fancy and even have a picnic by the Thames. It's just a wonderful place to pick up some food and produce. I started my day off with a juice because I'm not a big breakfast person and that cost me £4.25. Coffee is something that I truly love so that was next on my list and there are two great places in Barry Market. There's Monmouth Coffee and Gentleman's Barista just down the road. I generally prefer to go to Gentleman's Barista because it's a little bit more chilled and off the main road whereas Monmouth Coffee is right next to the market. Next was to walk along the Thames. There are so many great things to see along the Thames. I'm always in awe when I walk past things like oh my gosh I'm in London and I live here. It's, I find it quite exciting. So you can walk past Shakespeare's Globe, see the Tate Modern and then I went across the Millennium Bridge and you would recognize Millennium Bridge from the Harry Potter movies. It's also um, got a great view of St. Paul's. It was actually built so it had the perfect line of sight to see St. Paul's and that's why there's so many epic photos that you can take from that location. When you're walking across the bridge, there's also like 400 little pieces of artwork that you can find. It kind of looks like chewing gum has been stuck there. So that's pretty cool. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. They call him the chewing gum man. His real name is Ben Wilson. So there are his little artworks that are embedded across the bridge. My next stop was to walk across Millennium Bridge and get to St Paul's and St Paul's is such an iconic building of London. You can go up and visit however I really like to go to One New Change and go up the lift to the rooftop and just have views of St Paul's from there. I've always wanted to climb up St Paul's but I've just never gotten around to it but a little tidbit if you do have a rail ticket you can get the days out guide and it will give you two for one to get up to St Paul's. So just double check the days out guide website to see if they're offering it at this point in time and it's a great way to save some money and also it has good views at the top of the cathedral but there are a lot of stairs so do be warned. Next was the Barbican Centre. The Barbican complex is in brutalist architecture style so it's really out there and some people love it and some people hate it but it's a really cool place to go and visit. The centre took over a decade to build and the Queen also declared it as one of the modern wonders of the world. It's recognised internationally as an urban landscape and one of the most significant architecture buildings of the 20th century. So it's a pretty cool complex that you definitely need to explore. It has apartments in there, some secret gardens and the Barbican Centre which is what I was heading to and the Barbican Centre has so many cool things in there. So you have the conservatory which I was going to, you have a cinema, you have exhibitions and you have restaurants. So it is a really cool place to spend an afternoon. Uh, the conservatory has over 1500 plants and it's just really nice to walk around, take some photos. For lunch I did opt for one of the restaurants in the Barbican Centre. It overlooked some of the areas which was really nice and it was a super sunny day. I went to a place called Bonfire which serves burgers and it was just a nice chilled way to spend my lunch time. That came to £22.10. However, if you're looking for something a bit different, there is White Cross Street. And historically, they have markets open during the weekday 
and you can go pick up some lunch there and go to the two brewers pub and sit and eat your lunch. Um, there are also restaurants along White Cross Street, so that's just around the corner from the Barbican Centre, and it's well worth going to. Afterwards, had a little wander around the centre. Make sure you don't get lost, because the estate is big. I headed towards Moorgate because I was going to Shoreditch. Um, on my way to Shoreditch, I stopped by Eatley. It's this Italian um place that has just recently opened up it's got market stalls and restaurants and cafes and gelato everything italian that you could want some people say it's a bit overrated but you know it's just like a nice place to visit i grabbed an italian espresso there it was two pounds after i finished off at italy i wandered through shoreditch to a place called passion vino it's this cute italian wine bar and sat there for some wine got a nice table outside and I asked the lovely staff member which white wine recommendations they uh, suggest they are really good for taking in your taste and your budget range and suggesting a bottle that you can buy uh, so we had two white wines there which were both fantastic for a hot summer's day. The bill for the wine came to £33.50. So yeah, I did spend a bit there. And then afterwards headed to Hoxton. Hoxton has uh, quite a good Vietnamese selection. They've got what's called the Faux Mile. So if you've heard of like Brick Lane Curry Mile, then Hoxton has the Vietnamese Faux Mile. And it's great to get some Vietnamese food here. I went to Song Q Cafe which um, is lovely. I had some fried spring rolls, some noodles, and just had a great time with friends. I also recommend Bun Bun Bun, which is just across the road. The total came to £25 for dinner. With the addition of transport cost of £6.20, my total day came to £95.35. pence. I did spend a lot of money on food and drinks, but that's how I enjoy my holidays but I did get to see some of the iconic places in London. If you're looking for something non-touristy to do, then I have this video right here for you to watch.